order. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance to our flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated. Have the roll call, please. Vice Chair Jacks. You may be coming in on the on the teams. Um, we'll check on that. Uh, Commissioner Barlow. Here. Commissioner Kelly. Here. Commissioner Hassett. Here. Commissioner Meal. Here. Commissioner Martin. Here. Commissioner Patillo. Here. Commissioner Alexander. Here. Commissioner Morse. Here. And Chairman or Chairperson Gillette. Here. We have a quorum. Thank you. We will now have an automated announcement. Anyone who has not signed in, please do so at the table located in the lobby. Should anyone wish to speak, please complete a request to speak form, which is also located on the lobby table next to the sign-in sheet. A request to speak form must be completed for each item you would like to speak on. Please note, there are stairs on the right, left, and center aisles, and we ask that you use caution when using the stairs. There is also a ramp located to the audience's left. If anyone has written comments, exhibits, petitions, photos, or letters they intend to present at today's meeting, have 17 copies and give them to a staff member at the back of the auditorium. Staff member, please hold up your hand for the audience. If you do not have 17 copies, you may use the overhead camera to present your documents. Please place your documents on the podium and line it up with the arrows indicated. If you want your documentation to go on record, you must hand them to the clerk after your presentation with the agenda item number clearly marked on the documentation. Members of the public cannot speak to staff members that are seated at the tables with microphones during the meeting. If you have questions, please see the staff member located in the back of the auditorium. All speakers will be limited to two minutes to make their presentation statements. Everyone, please turn off all cell phones or place them on vibrate during the meeting. If you must take a call, please leave the meeting area and go outside to have your conversation. We also ask the audience to refrain from talking with one another during the presentations and discussions. Today, the Planning and Zoning Commission will hear public testimony and then forward a recommendation to the Board of Supervisors. Everyone attending the meeting is asked to remember that the administrative building and campus are tobacco-free areas, which means no smoking is allowed from curb to curb. No food or drinks are allowed in the auditorium except for bottled water. If there are any items remaining on the agenda, the Commission will break for lunch for one hour per the Chairman's discretion. Today the Planning and Zoning Commission will hear public testimony and then forward a recommendation to the Board of Supervisors. The items with a recommendation made by the Commission will be heard by the Board of Supervisors on Tuesday, January the 3rd, 2023 at 9.30 a.m. in this same location with the exception of any continued items. I now need a motion to approve the November the 9th Planning and Zoning Commission minutes. Motion to approve. Your second. second. I have a motion um, by um, Commissioner Martin, si um, seconded by Commissioner Hassett. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. We will now move to item number one Amy Patz. Evaluation of a special use permit. Item number 
402-33-023 to allow for a 100 foot tall and 993 square foot song in an A general zone. Uh, excuse me, they cannot hear you. Please. Item number one, evaluation of a request for a special use permit for assessor's parcel number 402-33-023 to allow for a 100 foot tall, 993 square foot sign in an A general zone in the Littlefield vicinity. As of last night, staff has received five letters of opposition and a petition on this request. Staff recommends approval with standard conditions. Thank you. We'll now open the public hearing on item number one. Does the applicant wish to speak? You need my address? Do I? Uh, that, the speaker doesn't seem to be on. Yeah, I've, I've let IT know that the mics aren't working right now. Yours is off. Yeah. IT, our mics need, yep, there we go. Is this one on? Does that yes, yeah. now it is. Thank so you. Jana Ward with Maverick. Do you need my address? Yes, please. Um, 185 South State Street, Salt Lake City, Utah 84106. So I'm just, I mean, I guess it's just kind of known what we're looking for is a 100 foot sign for Maverick. It's kind of specific to gas stations more than any other business that we attract the freeway traffic and that they see us in time to take an exit safely. So the, we have um, the sign company is Yesco and they go out and do a flagging where they show what distance, you know, a visual distance and height will make sense. So this is, um, the 100 feet is, I know, an exception through the special use con special use permit, um, and that will just create visibility for our customers. Um, and that's everything from me. Thank you. Thank you. I have some people who would like to speak on this subject. I have a question for her. Yes, I do too. Well, okay. Excuse me. Uh, would you come back back to the podium, please? There's not going to be a Maverick on this property, is there? It's just a sign for the Mavericks. No, it's a Maverick gas station. There will be a Maverick on that property? Yeah. So it's an allowed use. That's why it doesn't come before this body. It's a, an allowed use on the property. But we haven't approved a, a Maverick at that location? <laughs> Madam Chair, Commissioner Barlow, the property, I believe, is zone C2H or a zone sorry as an a zone which allows for a gas station outright it would not need to come before the commission or the board of supervisors the only reason why this is before you today is because it's larger than what we would allow in the first place and it requires a special use permit per our zoning ordinance okay thank you any other questions yes madam chair um yes actually i have a few questions um is this the least distance that they have cited that the sign would be available or is it kind of midway it could you could you go less height or whatever and my second question is what is the light distance how far will the light shine and how close is the nearest resident so I won't have great answers for all those but um, the 100 feet is an ideal height I think that we could go lower and still be successful, but um, I wouldn't be able to know how low. Um, the sign company does those studies. And, and then light output really is, is also managed by your zoning code. So there should be like lumen requirements and it's usually dimmed at night and, would, and there's like, we'll just follow what the zoning code uh, shows regarding that and then um, the residents are I mean the closest residents are below like down a cliff but they're really close I mean we, we are bordering residential zone but they're down below 
and so your light would be shining on their properties so that's not allowed also in a zoning ordinance you cannot have light trespass so we wouldn't be allowed to all lights are down shielded on anything on the property and the signs are an interesting it's not, I wouldn't say an exception but they obviously are like outputting light really high but not really like glaring into houses they're just obstructing some views I mean I'd be interested to see if the if the sign company could do even a study like showing if they'll even be able to see it from how far below they are that specific neighborhood thank you mm -hmm. Any other Jim, questions? Yeah. How much how much larger is this sign than conforming signs? I'm going to have the... Uh, Just approximate. Give me an idea. Yeah, these guys have a better knowledge of the code directly. Chairman Gillette, uh, Commissioner Kelly, so the maximum height for a sign in the, for this property would be 45 feet? Uh, and the maximum square feet for this property, given the amount of frontage that it had, would be 500 square feet. So is it the sign, uh, size, or what? Yeah, it's the height. Yeah, yeah it's the right. height. That's twice. Twice as okay, yeah, height you. and square footage. Uh, Commissioner Meal? Why does the sign need to be so big? I, I can explain it's, it. It's because it's like going off the exit, and, the, and they're trying to track the freeway. The yeah, so that the cars coming from a certain yeah, distance whole, see it, acknowledge it, think I'm going to get off safely, get over. Madam Chair, if I may just jump in a little bit and provide a little bit of history. Um, if the commission will recall, I think it was Scott, about a year ago. About a year ago, we, we uh, had a similar instance, and the commission and the board actually allowed for larger signs than is is typically allowed in our, our zoning ordinance by special use permit and those were only allowed on i believe scott i-40 and i-15 so the two freeway corridors uh the commission and the, and the board ultimately approved to allow for a larger sign with a special use permit so that you know it, it's not a uh a, something that happens throughout the county it is specific to those two corridors and the mechanism is in place and that's what the applicant is going through here through that mechanism to allow for a larger sign on that corridor any other questions thank you very much thank you um now i have several people who want to speak on item number one so you will be limited to three minutes so the first person is edith kirk And if you wouldn't mind, uh, Ken uh, Kronspreger, if you would be ready to come up after she's finished. I'm Edith Kirk, and I live right below the cliff. And we need your address, ma'am. Oh, it's 3567 Scarlett O'Hara. Thank you. In Beaver Dam. Um, I'm opposed to this large sign because it will reflect that the light will come down over our area and um i um there's a big sign at the truck stop in um the uh, desert, springs. desert springs and you can go out in our street and look up that way and you can see that sign and it is not a hundred foot sign it's probably the 45 minimum and a hundred foot one would be just like right over our properties so i'm opposed to that okay thank you thank you mr krenzmeyer that's right here and i would like for charles mccain to be ready please my name is ken grotsberger uh, 3523 scarlett o'hara and i am standing up uh, but uh, the idea that uh, the sign is necessary to be that high to make an exit safely I don't know that anybody's had problems making that exit into Beaver Dam at Littlefield uh, and the sign is going to be on the highest hill or the highest vantage point coming out of the uh, the uh, gorge river gorge so to make it a hundred foot high, I think it's just uh, going to be a little bit 
too much as far as light pollution is concerned. That area that we live at just below Beaver Dam sits, or I mean our complex is down here. The trucks or the uh, Maverick's gonna be here. So any uh, light pollution that comes over the edge is gonna be right in our backyard. It's a 55 and older community. Uh, and uh, we bought there for the quiet and the freedom of big city lights. And uh, as much as we love them, we're no kids because we're 55 and older and we don't want any big city lights there. We'd rather not have big city lights coming down on our houses. Uh, <clears throat> so that's, that's all I have. And, uh, but as far as the, the visibility coming out of the, the uh, uh, Virgin River Gorge, that, that cliff is probably the highest point of visibility in the area, it's, it's much higher than uh, the uh, truck stop at, uh, B at Springs. So anyway, that's it. Well, I have a question. Um, the, the applicant said that the law prevents them from having their light um, affect you at all, which means that there are rules about the lights so that they have uh, guards to keep the light from doing what you're saying it's gonna do. Well, that, that that might very well be. I'm not a light expert. I'm not a, I don't know anything about that. All I know is uh, if it, they put it 100 feet in the air, if the, we can see the one down at the truck stop up at uh, the Springs area, the one right above us certainly, I think, would, would necessarily affect that area also. Uh, the one at uh, the other truck stop that's going in down the road a couple of miles from us will be far enough away where it shouldn't bother us. But we're, we're, we're down here and they're up here. So however they can engineer that out, but I, I don't believe a, a hundred foot is necessary. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. McKean, and I would like for Richard uh, Boulard to be ready. Hello, uh, my name is Charles McKean and I live at 3465 Scarlet O'Hara Drive. Uh, I'm Edie's next door neighbor, so both of us are just right there to the top of the hill where the, uh, the plateau takes off. Uh, she mentioned about the, the sign in Desert Springs, that's probably, I don't know, three miles from us, but we can see the sign. And it is seeable, uh, meaning it, it, you know, it's a 45 foot sign or whatever your regulations are. And uh, to me, I don't have a problem with that. But I did go, go northbound as an instance going into Mesquite one night and uh, Rising Star put this big digital sign outside and when it went white, you had trouble seeing anything off of the interstate so you know they can they can say protective lighting and all that unless you're dealing with green or red if you deal with white I don't even know how in the world you're going to protect the people down here or if we're not on an angle directly to the, to the sign we don't know where the signs going to be exactly but we droned the pilot one night and took some pictures down at that truck stop with a normal height of a sign and it's like daylight I mean it's a truck stop it's a commercial truck stop and I don't know that uh, just to make a long story short I'm just against it because we they were mentioned that that's the reason why we're down here is to retire <clears throat> and the Maverick going in I don't know what that's going to do with the value of our property to start with, let alone this, this issue. And I, I realize we're staying right on the side. So anyway, that's about all I had. So thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I have a question from um, Commissioner Kelly. No, Hassett. Yeah, uh, it's actually a question for staff, just for some clarification before the next person speaks. So the property owner does not have to they can put up a gas station based on zoning right they don't need to come to us as long as they build it appropriately they can put up a gas station i'm also going to assume you can just shake your head that the gas station will also be large enough to accommodate semis which means a large parking lot right no parking for semis. 
Okay, so there's going to be, they can put up the gas station, which will have lights. There's going to be parking lot lights installed for this. They can also put up a sign without having to come get a special use permit, but that height is restricted. So they're here because they want a higher sign, right? Um, so they can do a sign regardless. They can do a gas station regardless. They can do a parking lot lights regardless. Sign brightness, or I don't know what the terminology is, lumens, is regulated by ADOT, correct? Uh, Madam Chair, Commissioner Hass says that's actually regulated by us. We have a, a um, ordinance within our sign ordinance that regulates the lumens of the signs. Okay, but when like when they're on the interstate, isn't ADOT somewhat involved in that or something? I'm only asking because of a sign that was in in Bullhead a, wh a while ago. Uh, Madam Chair, Commissioner Hass said that so this sign is on the the private will be on the private property and would be under our jurisdiction, and we have our ordinance has lumens requirements. Uh, for example, they mentioned the pilot up um, in the Desert Hills area. They their sign was was brighter than it uh, was allowed to be. We uh, issued a violation notice to them and they were they ended up dimming it uh, for the lumens that we require. Which would be same case scenario in this circumstance if something does happen. Correct. So regardless, the gas station can go in, they can put up parking lot lights, they can put up any perimeter lighting they want, and they can go do a sign. The only thing we're changing is from what were they restricted height wise? Forty five feet. Uh, yeah, Madam Chair, Commissioner Hassett, the, the current regulation is forty five feet and uh, they could go up to five hundred square feet on their sign. The, they're proposing to do a hundred foot and nine 993 square feet. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, Commissioner Meal. I have a question for staff uh, legal. <clears throat> it was stated before where there is a uh, the similar sign within the county that has already been approved. If this is not approved, is there could there be any legal uh, kickback? Uh, Chairman Gillette and Commissioner Meal. Uh, there's always the potential for uh, legal consequences whenever uh, the board or the, or the commission, uh, when the board makes a decision, there's virtually no repercussions uh, for the commission because you don't make the ultimate decision. Um, however, <laughs> however, depending on what the board um, decides to do, whether they overrule this commission or whether they agree with you on whichever decision you make, on this issue, there's the potential for for litigation, um, and, and and I think what you're what you're getting at is kind of like an equal protection argument that we're treating somebody differently than somebody else. Um, that's certainly an argument that could be made, um, but again, this is a legislative body, and uh, take, taking into consideration all of the factors, uh, it's really a very very much a discretionary decision by uh, this commission and the board. I'm, I'm comfortable defending whatever uh, decision is made by the, ultimately by the board, uh, whether to approve it or not. Um, so I'm not real concerned about it, but there is the potential for litigation, sure. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, Richard Bouchard. Roland. <coughs> Roland, Bouchard. Yes, Roland. I apologize. It's okay. I want you to look behind you, see that wall. That's not even half the size of that sign that's going to go up. Um, we live in an area where it's dark on purpose. We have wildlife out there. We have nautical animals that come out. Uh, that's all going to be affected by the lighting from the gas station alone, never mind the sign. <coughs> the uh, other issue is that I go out of my house, get in between the two houses. I look up and I can see the Milky Way. It's going to disappear. There's nothing that you can say or convince me that says it. You asked a lot of questions to uh, the young lady that came up here um, that she didn't have answers for. That tells us something. Yeah. Uh, they should have had something here that said to answer your questions. How many lumens? Now, I worked security for 20, 30 something years. And <clears throat> When you start adding light, you start adding dark shadows. You start adding dark shadows, you had problems. So we're against that completely for various reasons. Sure. Thank you. Okay. 
Patricia Hayhe. Oh, hi. Hi, hi. I'm, so, I'm really sorry. I am terrible with Mikey. names. No worries. And they write them, which doesn't make them clear. Okay, so I'm curious. You guys have already approved a sign similar somewhere else. Did it butt up against residential property? She needs to state, she needs her, to state name. her name and address. Uh, we need your name and address, please. Oh, I'm sorry. Patricia Hahai, um, 3451 Scarlet O'Hara, Beaver Dam. Thank you. Uh, does staff know the answer to that question? Uh, Madam Chair, um, Commission, the sign that was approved recently um, for the uh, larger sign um, along the I-40 corridor was in Yucca uh, for the what the gas station that was approved there oh. the uh, there is residential zoning directly adjacent to the parcel and I believe there are a few houses uh, nearby as well uh, but directly adjacent it is residential okay good to know I am against the sign I think a hundred foot is a bit excessive and double the size, double. That's a bit excessive to me. So I am against the sign. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, Jay Hitchcock. <laughs> and the next one will be, um, I think it's Gary Dunaway. State your name and your address. J. Hitchcox, and the address is 3471 East Scarlet O'Hara. I'm directly underneath where the gas station is going to be, and where, probably where the sign is going to be. My main objection is we don't need to double the size of a sign to be seen from the freeway. It is it's just an overblown, in my opinion. I uh, I disagree with the wanting to put a put a big big sign up there, and I know that they say well it won't affect you, but it will affect us. Like I say, we we have we don't have street lights for a reason. We so we can see the stars, and it's just a real quiet community, and we really oppose anything that's going to interfere with our quietness. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Dunaway. Yes, I'm Gary Dunaway, 3469 Scarlett O'Hara. Um, they say in the sign is 900 and some square feet. That's almost as big as some of the houses in the area. So maybe a little excessive for her. Um, she said also so they can see it to get on the exit. The only people that was notified on this was within 300 feet of the sign. Now, if that light's only going to affect 300 feet, why do they need it on the interstate to see it two miles down the road for them to get off an exit? Now, we've got a truck stop that's on both sides of us, one existing, one being built now. Uh, I believe the sign is going to be the size so somebody can see that. They want the biggest in the area so it can be seen before the other truck stop signs because it's going to be twice as tall and twice as big. So we do in our HOA, we do not have street lights as Jay said because we do not want light pollution because we like to go out in our community, our parks, our desert areas and see the stars and stuff at night which we do quite often have gatherings out. And I don't know how many of you have ever been to uh, Beaver Dam but we're a quiet little community that's going to have three big gas stations within two and a half miles. And we have the only exit that's going to get to two of them. So we are also talking a lot of other issues, but this is for the sign only. So I would invite all of you to come to Beaver Dam and meet with us so we can discuss some of the other issues that's going on because we're kind of the forgotten little strip of 30 miles of Arizona that it takes us three and a half hours to get here. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Alan Rayner. Yeah. 
Name and address, please. Good morning. My name is Alan Rayner. Uh, we live on 303 North Arrowhead Loop uh, within the Beaver Dam community. And uh, I'd just like to uh, support the other folks that have already spoken. I agree with everything that they say. We, we have uh, a lovely little community that's pretty much uh, forgotten, I think, by the county, but uh, we like it. And uh, <clears throat> the sign's way too high and uh, would give a, uh, uh, the ambient light from it would, would uh, ruin our, our night sky at 100 feet and the size of the sign, totally unnecessary. They could put it down the road a mile or in either direction and they would be in open desert, which wouldn't bother anybody. So um, I really think that it's uh, the sign regulations are in place for a reason. And when you ask for a special permit, you should have a reason to do that. And their, their only reason is to increase their visibility in competition with the other gas stations. And it does nothing to benefit our community and, uh, and those that live there for the reasons that they live there. So I would ask you to consider that, and I thank you for your time. Thank you. Any commissioners have anything they want to say about this? Do, yeah. Com uh, Commissioner uh, Barlow? I just want the people in Beaver Dam and Scenic and Littlefield to know that they are not forgotten about. That's why I sit on this commission, because the supervisors do care about that area and do care about the Arizona Strip. And I drove further than all of you did from Colorado City to get here. And we do care and we do appreciate you coming and, and voicing your opinion, whatever it is, for it or against. Thank you. Any, uh, uh, Commissioner Meal? I have a question for the applicant. <clears throat> uh, what type of uh, that kickback would there be if <clears throat> that if the sign went back to that the normal size sign, but the same height from your company? We will just follow your recommendations. This is, you okay. know, we come here following the process, and it's really up to you to vote on the approval or not. Okay. And then it will still go to Board of Supervisors, and they'll have another decision from there. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes. Commissioner Morris? Yes, uh, this is probably for staff. Um, may I assume we've already reviewed a site plan and we know where the sign is going to be on the parcel? Uh, Chairman Gillette, Commissioner Morris, so a site plan is currently under review. Typically signs are not included on the site plan. Uh, in this case, the, the decision of the board could determine where they end up placing that sign. So usually the signs are located after the fact when they apply for the permit itself. Okay, but we're given a permit to put a sign on this property the closer they put it to the to the uh, residential the more impact it's going to be um, the further away there is also an issue of it's on a curvature there of, of the freeway and the direction that that sign faces would be critical because if it's a parallel two-face sign then it's going to be shining into the residential area or not be able to see it from the south or northbound lane as well. Um, so uh, I, I think it's critical that we we get some idea of where and and what placement and rotation that sign is going to be before we uh, before we go further. Did you have something, <clears throat> Commissioner Hassett? So we all know this sign's happening regardless. The Maverick's going up regardless. The sign's going to happen regardless. Can we just meet in the middle? Call it 70, 75 feet? No. Okay. No. They're, they're, all right. It's, it's going to happen, and the parking lot lights are going to go up, and the, the pavement's going to be laid, and the building will be built. That's, that's inevitable based on everything. They, they, they meet all of their requirements to have a 100-foot sign. So... Not willing to budge on that one? Okay. Thank you. 
Uh, any other questions? Hearing none, I'll ask for a motion. I'll make a motion that we deny. Commissioner, uh, I mean, Barlow. Chairman Gillette, if I yes. can interject just briefly, um, before a uh, motion is entertained, uh, I would recommend that the chair close the public hearing. Oh, thank you so much. I now close the public hearing. <laughs> I forgot to open it, too, I think. <laughs> Tough day. Yeah. Can you start all over then? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Not you guys. <laughs> Commissioner Barlow. I make a motion that we deny agenda item one, number one. Second. second. We have a, um, a motion by Commissioner Barlow and seconded by uh, Commissioner uh, Martin. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Nay. So what this means is that we have denied this application. And I will move on to item two. Chairperson Gillette, can I just verify that we have two nays? Or was, was that unanimous? Um, I didn't hear On me. the vote, I think I got um, Morse was and Hassett. Thank you very much. OK. I didn't hear that. Um, moving on to item number two, Matthew Gunderson. Item number two is an evaluation of a request for a special use permit for assessor's parcel number 4025913A to allow for an RV park in an AR agricultural residential zone in the Beaver Dam vicinity. Uh, staff has received a petition with 48 signatures and 21 letters of opposition for this item. Staff recommends approval with standard conditions. I'm going to open the public hearing. Is the applicant present and do you wish to speak? Come to the podium and give us your name and your address. Yes, I'm Denley Falk and uh, my residence is 3272 Broken Rock Way, Washington, Utah. Does anyone have any questions of this applicant? Do you have anything to say? Um, yes, I, I just uh, would like to say that I'm only trying to beautify my property and uh, it will be a quality, nice place. And uh, speaking of lights, uh, everything's going to be down low. Uh, we've planted over 500 pomegranate bushes there. I've uh, got over 160 fruit trees. We're only trying to beautify the area. And uh, we've got uh, three greenhouses. I'm trying to produce food. Uh, I think it's something that's not happening anymore. And uh, my vision is to have uh, an RV park, really nice, classy place with uh, eventually have a clubhouse and uh, a pool and uh, maybe farm to table type of thing, kind of a health thing where uh, people can come and stay and, and eat organic food and, and just uh, make it a nice area. I'd like, like to have it a, just a nice kind of a retreat. I want trip around, excuse me, around the property uh, for walking and uh, uh, just kind of beautify the area and uh, it's going to be nice, you know, only classy. It's, it's going to be nice and uh, I, I'm aware of uh, uh, the neighbors thinking that they might, you know, you know what we got going there, but it's going to be uh, a nice place. I have a question. So. Um, Commissioner uh, Martin has a question. Uh, this sounds more like a commercial project and something that is not to be in a residential agricultural neighborhood. You're describing something commercial. Well, the RV park will be, uh, I, I guess that's uh, kind of commercial, but anyway, it'll be a place for RVs and uh, a place where we grow food and and that was my initial intent is to just grow a lot of food so uh i'm not sure if i understand this, it sounds like you're describing a commercial project and you are in an agricultural zoning uh, uh, well, I, I don't get the commercial part it's, rv is commercial i guess you know 
Yeah. You know, it's your thought. But Chairwoman Gillette, Commissioner Martin. Uh, so an RV park is an allowed use in the agricultural residential zone with this special use permit. So that, that is a use that would be allowed uh, with the special use permit. So that's what they have applied for here. And how many RVs are you looking to put in this park? There'll be a total of about 30, 30 31. Uh, it'll be in a couple of different phases, just a few RVs at first. I've got uh, uh, a septic system already set up for maybe a half a dozen. And then, uh, then phase two will bring in about 25 RVs down the fence line uh, of my adjoining property to the south. And uh, uh, I want to make them nice. I don't want them fit tight. I want to make uh, so there's room for picnicking and, and uh, so people can come and enjoy. See, it's going to be a nice place. We're not going to, you know, just shove in a bunch of... Okay, on your access, how many properties that are existing would these RVs be passing? Uh, I'm just trying to understand your question. How many uh, properties How many will we have? existing properties would be trafficked by the access to your property? What kind of traffic are you going to? Oh, okay, okay. Uh, we figured, I have an engineer, he's helping me, and uh, he's, he did the math, and it's about 17 trips a day, uh, in and out, about 17 trips a day. And the roads are uh, set up for it. It's a public, you know, roads. Um, it's all been figured in and uh, designed. And so uh, it, the roads will handle that type of traffic, 17 per day is is what uh, my engineers figured. Okay, thank you. Any other questions of the applicant? Yes. A question. Uh, uh, Commissioner what, what access road is it to your property? What, what road, it, what's the name of the road? Old Pioneer Road, uh, but then it turns into another name, but it's Old Pioneer Road so going is, up the wash. Is this up on Jones Flat or is this down below? Down below, up the Beaver Dam Wash. So, so you turn at the uh, Beaver Dam yes. gas station and go down that road? Yes. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Pratilla? Yeah, you uh, mentioned you have uh, wastewater disposal on site for the uh, RVs and you want to put up to 30. Could you tell me what? Okay. Um, so right now we're set up for about like six and uh, in phase two it'll be about 25 more and we will put in a whole new system that will that will handle that okay so it'll be all engineered and done right any other questions I had a question if you may um, Commissioner Morse yeah there I was looking at the right-of-way map on here and it looks like there's a a myriad of, of public right-of-ways across your property. Um, are you planning on abandoning those or? That's what I'm, yes. Okay. We talked about my engineer, we're gonna abandon them all, yep. Okay, thank you. Yes. So oh, thank you very much. Did you want one more question from Commissioner Martin? So can staff just clarify, being that he's requesting a special use permit, would he have to come before the board every two years to renew it? Uh, Chairman Gillette, Commissioner Martin, uh, no, this special use permit does not have an expiration date on it. So one of the requirements will they it will be that they will have to go through the RV park plan review process, which is reviewed by uh, various county departments, including public works for the, the access and planning to make sure that it meets all of the, the zoning requirements. Um, and then uh, condition number five is that if, it's, if it doesn't start within one year of the approval of the special use permit, or if the use gets discontinued for six months, then the special use permit would expire. But other than that, they would not need to come in and renew it. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, sir. I I'll just add one more thing. Uh, uh, Commissioner Pertello. I'm sorry. sorry. Um, yeah, I have a qu general question for staff. Um, so this uh, particular location, how far is it from the other 
RV type parks along old Pioneer Road, like I've tried to jog my memory here. There's like Pine to Palms right after uh, uh, the uh, gas station as you're headed up. It's about a mile and a half up about that about road. About a mile and a half? I would say. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's not an unusual use for the area. No. Any more questions? <coughs> Commissioner Rio. Question for staff. Uh, statement has been made as where he intends to abandon that the other uh, excess roads if uh, if they are abandoned do those uh, roads go does the the property go back to the owner or what's the story on it uh, Chairman Gillette, Commissioner Meal, uh, the process for abandoning a right-of-way uh, starts with an application through the Public Works Department. Um, input is taken from uh, ad adjoining property owners and those who might have an interest, in including uh, utility companies who utilize public rights-of-way to put their lines in. Um, once that information is brought in, that goes in front of the Board of Supervisors, and the Board of Supervisors makes a determination whether to abandon the public right-of-way or not. If they do decide to abandon the public right-of-way and approve uh, the application, then the public right-of-way ceases to exist on the person's property. Okay. Any other questions? <laughs> no, sorry, just a Commissioner quick, Alexander. Mm -hmm. Just a quick uh, question for staff uh, clarification. So, would the abandonment just of these moment. roadways be addressed in the site plan or in the review of the oh, RV park as a part of that review, or would that be done separately? Are you asking me? Uh, Chairman Gillette, Commissioner Alexander, that is a process that is done separately, and those right of ways will need to be approved. That abandonment would need to be approved by the Board of Supervisors. And if they plan on building within those existing current right of ways, the, that abandonment would need to be done before we would be able to approve any plan that has them building anything through them. Well, then I have a question for the applicant. Yes. Are you not getting the cart before the horse? Should you not um, approach the board and try to have those roadways abandoned so that you can continue with the plan going forward? I think that would be in phase two we will, that we'll deal with most of that, what we already have. I don't know if it would uh, affect what we have right in place right now. But I mean, if it's uh, required, it's no problem. So, yeah. Okay, Whatever. thank you. Any other questions? <laughs> Commissioner Meal. <laughs> uh, this is for that the applicant. To your current knowledge, do you know of any uh, in these in these existing uh, that right of ways? Do you know of any that utilities or things that are right of ways uh, that in those at the present time? Uh, we don't affect it by any right of ways that I'm aware of. Uh, with all the title work that's been done and everything, we're, we really don't feed into any other properties around. So I think we're clear there. With, okay. Yeah. Can I just say one thing? Sure. Uh, I, I'm from St. George, and I bought property down there wanting to just grow stuff. And uh, I only wanted an acre, and it ended up to be I've got, like, a lot bigger piece of property. And I had this misconception in my mind I've been a sinner here uh, I thought well Beaver Dam nothing there's no rules down there I can just do anything I want and uh, <laughs> regrettably I'm 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 in repentance mode right now can I say that yeah. and so I've, I've done lots of stuff but I am I'm trying to fix everything I've got <laughs> guys on it. so uh, my attitude is not just to go go uh, and do stuff and uh, re disregard the, the law and the rules so anyway I am in repentance mode I'm trying to make everything right down the line and I want to make it a nice place so I will make it a nice place so thank you very much thank you um, now I have some people who would like to speak on the item two. Tom O'Donnell and in line would be Carolyn O'Donnell 
Hello, your name, name and your address, please. My name's Tom O'Donnell. I'm at 890 North Ironwood, right adjacent to the property. Uh, I'm not much of a public speaker, but here to represent my neighborhoods who could not attend. Most of us are retired and love the sparsely populated desert landscape of Beaver Dam Wash and don't want it changed. Safety is already a problem in our single access. All of our traffic comes down Pioneer Road, in and out. I know he said 17 trips with 30 trailers there. That's 30 trips. People go out into the oh, sorry about that. Out into the area and go places. And that road is already very heavily traveled. Most people are going very fast. We don't have much law enforcement out there. Um, it's a dead end road. Traffic speeders are already a hazard to residents and pets. More traffic will only increase that hazard. We moved to this agricultural residential area to enjoy life in this spectacular desert area and feel 30 plus RVs across the street will have an adverse effect to the area and resident safety. Um, also, as Denley said, he's been in repentance mode. We've had problems since the beginning. He's had people coming and knocking on doors looking for rental properties he's got where he's got people coming up to camp, which is not allowed where we're at. It's not a commercial area. We don't want it a commercial area. Thank you for your time. You're welcome. Tom, oh, oh no, it's Mrs. Hi, I'm Carolyn O'Donnell, 890 North Ironwood Avenue. I am against this, as are most all of our neighbors. It's a quiet, dark neighborhood. We are concerned about our safety. This is a dead-end residential road. Um, we are worried about people wandering. Like my husband mentioned, they've already had people coming in the yards, walking in their yards with their animals, gated yards, looking for the TP and stuff that they already had set up and rented out. And if you go rent out stuff, you look and it tells you about checking with your county, checking with the local ordinances. Obviously, they did not do that. We are worried about our safety. We're worried about the traffic, the noise pollution, the air pollution, the light pollution, the garbage that is already flowing on this lot onto us. It's a nice place to live, and we do not want it changed. I am against this. That is Thank you. That. You're welcome. Thank you. Tom O'Donnell? Um, well, and, uh, Did you so want to speak again? No, okay. septic. I don't uh, yeah. Patricia, and there's that name again. <coughs> oh, hi. Oh, hi. Um, I'm curious on how many RV parks we need in that local area. There are quite a few already. And yeah, it's not bad in the summer. Traffic isn't bad. But with that amount of people coming into the area, it's just a little two-lane road. Uh, I'm sorry. We need more traffic, more better roads than what we've got if you guys continue to put RV parks in the area and approve them. I, have so a I'm, I, do, I don't think we need another RV park. I have a question. Sure. Who maintains the road? I'm assuming Mojave County. So you and your neighbors do not contribute to the road? Well, we pay property tax. Okay. All right. Yeah. It was a oh, we, road. Oh, it's H, sir. <laughs> um, thank you very much. You're welcome. Now, if you'd like to speak, you can come up to the podium. It, you can come up to the podium and speak. Gary Dunaway, 3469 Scarlet O'Hara. That road a couple of years ago was just a gravel, nasty road. And the people, the residents, put millings on it that come off the interstate, I believe, and compacted it down. At that point, the county took the road over. So it is not a good base road to start with. It's just something to placate the people that live there to keep the dust down, which is doing a good job now. But you start putting a bunch of RVs and trucks going up and down it, the road's going to fall to pieces. Thank you. Uh, anyone else we should just speak on item number two? Then I'll close the public hearing. 
Does any commissioner have any questions? I have a question Commissioner for staff. Barlow. Um, this question is for staff. Would there be any requirement um, that this, if he puts in these RVs, this RV park, that he would have to main, help help maintain that road or or do upgrades to it or anything like that? Uh, Chairman Gillette, Commissioner Barlow. Uh, so anytime we do any kind of site plan or RV park plan review, part of that process is going to be uh, some sort of looking at the traffic generation of the site. And then that would be, because it's a county right of way and county maintained road, uh, that would be at the determination of the public works department on whether or not any improvements would need to be made for the site itself. Any other questions from the commissioners? Then I will ask for a motion. Um, I will make a motion to deny the request based on the uh, public response. There was numerous people in the area who have difficulty with this and I think that speaks very loudly. So I make a motion to deny. Second. I have a motion by Commissioner Alexander, seconded by Commissioner Martin. All in favor say aye. 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 Uh, opposed? No. Say. Uh, I believe that we need a roll call. <laughs> okay, so I have um, Commissioner Morris and Commissioner Meal um, or opposing, and Commissioner Hassett. Commissioner Kelly. And, and Commissioner Kelly. Okay, the motion still passes. It passes. Okay. Thank you. We'll move on to item number three. Amy Patsy. Item number three is an evaluation of a request for a minor personal house on the land of the residential land use to a general Thank you. Uh, I will um, now open the public hearing and I would like to say that if you guys are going to leave please do so orderly and quietly. Um, I have one, well first, is the applicant here and would he like to speak? Come to the podium. Okay. Good morning, Honorable Chairman, Commissioners. My name is Kathy Tackett Hicks. I'm acting as the owner's agent. Um, this is a request for the rezone and a minor general plan for a three acre parcel adjacent to um, already existing commercial as well as residential. Um, I kind of outlined it here. The only reason I have to come before you to request a minor general plan amendment is because a tiny tip of this um, site right here falls outside of the general plan designations. But you can see that the intent of this area is commercial, all fronting along I-15. This particular parcel actually has frontage on uh, East Farm Road, which is a county maintained road. We are in agreement with the staff recommendations and I'd ask for you to approve this, please. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer. Any questions for this applicant? Thank you very much. Thank you. I do have one person who would like to speak on this, Daniel Amster. Name and address, please. Uh, good morning, my name is Danny Amster. My address is 2645 West Cheyenne Avenue, North Las Vegas, Nevada. I'm the owner of a uh, parcel that abuts the subject parcel here. and. Um, I am opposed to this motion uh, because uh, this is residential property and they want to put a truck stop in and trucks um, 
are not good neighbors for residential. Uh, they have uh, commercial property all along Farm Road, which should be sufficient for their uses. There's no reason for them to have to go back into the residential area. Um, and that's why I oppose this. So there has Thank to you. Be this any commissioner have any questions? Yeah. This is general. Thank you very much. All this is AR now. Are there any others who wish to speak on this item? Hearing none, I'm going to close the uh, public hearing. Um, any commissioners have any comments or questions? Then I ask Yo. for uh, Commissioner Meal. Question uh, for the applicant. Where was she disappeared to? Madam Chair, Mr. Meal. Uh, define travel center. What are they going to have inside or outside? Is it like right? So we're working on a draft site plan right now. It'll have fuel facilities. This particular site has, uh, based on the draft that I've looked at, uh, very few truck parking areas. Um, so it's going to have a C store. It's going to have access off of farm, and um, there's also going to be a. They're proposing to put a Starbucks on the corner. So it's going to be a C-store, fuel facilities, parking on this particular uh, location on the plan. This is in the initial site plan that I've looked at right now. It has not been engineered, but just shows uh, vehicle parking. So when you have a Starbucks or drive through a C-store, you have to have a lot of parking. Okay. So any other questions of the applicant? Thank you very much. Yes. I'm going to call for a motion. I'll make a motion to approve this item. Second. I have a motion by Commissioner Barlow, seconded by Commissioner Morse. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. So we have one opposed. This has passed and we'll go to the, the Board of Supervisors. Item number four. Alex Bolin. Item 4 is an evaluation of a request for a special use permit for assessor's parcel number 3060610510A to allow for shed manufacturing in a C2H1A highway commercial one acre minimum lot size zone in the Golden Valley vicinity. Staff recommends approval with standard conditions. Thank you. I will open the public hearing. Anyone wishing to speak? Or is the applicant present and wishes to speak? <laughs> Come to the podium and give us your name and your address. My name is Jennifer Woods and the address is 5481 Highway 68 in Golden Valley. I am the applicant and I'm going to have Tammy speak on my behalf. Thank you. And I'm Tammy Ursabach, the Economic Development Director for Mojave County. And this applicant um, is purchasing, she pur er, she's in the process of purchasing the land for, to manufacture um, storage sheds. sheds. Sheds, I want to call them storage units. Sheds. There is a company just down the street from her that already manufactures sheds. It's right on the highway. When, after going through the process to purchase the land, they found out later that it was zoned differently. So to protect the land for where it's at and for other uses down the road, they would just like a special use permit instead of rezoning. Um, it's going to bring about 20 jobs to Gold Valley and so it'll be very supportive um, and needed in that area and what they can do to support them. Thank you. Are there any questions from the commissioners of the applicant? Thank you very much. Anyone else wishing to speak on this subject? Then I'll close the public hearing and ask for a motion. I move to approve. Second. I have a motion by Commissioner Pertillo, seconded by Commissioner Morse. All in favor say aye. 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 So aye. moved. Item number five, uh, Amy Patsy. Item number five is an evaluation of a request for an amendment to the Board of Supervisors resolution number.
Is the applicant present and do you wish to speak? I am present. Um, I think staff has already covered it, their approval. Okay. Um, anyone else wishing to speak? Because I've opened the public hearing. Hearing none, I'm going to close the public hearing and ask if any commissioners have any questions. I just had a question. Looks like there's an existing water tank on there, uh, uh, part staff? of the utility. Uh, Chairman Gillette, Commissioner Morris, uh, that is correct. There is a water tank on the property. Um, let me, I don't know if the pictures show it. Um, it's no longer in use by the water company. So when this was originally platted, uh, instead of doing an actual easement across the property, there is just a condition in the resolution that this parcel itself was reserved for utilities. Uh, the assumption is that it was because the water company was currently using it with those water tanks. The water company has since sold the property, uh, and so the, the new owner is looking to develop it residentially. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Hearing none, I will ask for a motion. Motion to approve according to staff recommendations. Second. I have a motion by Commissioner Kelly, seconded by Commissioner Hassett. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Item number six, Alex Bolin. Item six is an evaluation of a request for a rezone of assessor's parcel numbers 24101041 through 044 and 24101047 through 050 from an AR 18A agricultural residential 18 acre minimum lot size zone and an AR 15A agricultural residential 15 acre minimum lot size zone to a CRE 18A commercial recreation 18 acre minimum lot size zone to allow for a health and wellness retreat with hiking and cabin rentals in the Yucca vicinity. Staff has received one letter of support. Staff recommends approval with standard conditions. Thank you. I'll open the public hearing. Anyone wishing to speak on item number six? Hearing none, I'm going to close the a public hearing. I'm an applicant. Where are you? <laughs> oh, okay. You're slow. Please, your name and your address. Uh, my name is Christian Bunch. I live at 3348 Brenda Avenue in Kingman. Um, good morning, everyone. Uh, I represent a small business hoping to start a health retreat in Yucca. A few years ago, my business partner's father dissected his carotid artery and barely survived. He went to the National Institute of Health as well as the Mayo Clinic and was told to get his affairs in order because he had a tumor on his adrenal glands and he was given just a few months to live. Um, rather than take their advice, he uh, decided to go to a small health retreat at the base of Mount Rainier in Washington. And there he went and hiked and he ate well and he forgave people that he needed to forgive and he was able to find healing and NIH could not explain it um, unfortunately he died in a car accident um, a few years after that but he attributes his healing to that retreat um, we live in a world of constant stress and uh, we'd like to create an escape where people can unwind relax be out in nature and enjoy um, the desert so we've spoken to the county as well as the Property Owners Association President, Rob Hooper, and we believe that uh, rezoning is the best path forward. Um, we've tried to be as forthright as possible in this entire process. In the first phase, we expect 13 two-person dwellings, and at its final completion, we would expect 25 two-person dwellings on the 160 acres. We'd like to have a garden, an eating area, a hiking uh, area, as well as a spa. Uh, we want to be an asset to the community and the county, and I'm here if you have any questions. <laughs> Thank you. Any questions from the commissioners for this applicant? Besides when's the grand opening? <laughs> uh, 
Well, then I'm going to close the public hearing. Any commissioners have any questions? Hearing none, I'm going to ask for a motion. Motion to approve for staff recommendations. Second. I have a motion by Commissioner Kelly, seconded by Commissioner Hassett. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Congratulations. Nice presentation. Uh, yeah, item number seven, Peggy Clements. Item number seven is an evaluation of a request for a rezone of assessor's parcel numbers 32906233 and 32906234 from an R118 single family residential one acre minimum lot size zone to an AR agriculture residential zone to allow for an RV as a temporary residence and an accessory structure in the White Hills vicinity. Staff, staff recommends approval per development standard. Thank you. I'll open the public hearing. Is the applicant present and do you wish to speak? Are there any others who wish to speak on this item? Hearing none, I'm going to close the public hearing. Do any commissioners have any questions? I have a comment. Uh, Commissioner um, Martin. Um, being that they're saying that this is a temporary request, why are they not requesting a special use permit and requesting a rezone? Uh, Chairman Gillette, Commissioner Martin, uh, so the R1 zone that the property currently has does not allow for an RV on the property uh, as a temporary resident. So we don't allow for RVs as permanent residents, we only allow them as temporary residents. And they're only allowed as temporary residents in certain zones. So this is rezoning it to AR, the agricultural residential zone, which would allow for that RV to be used as a temporary residence. Uh, and that includes, so they would need to apply for a permit for that residence, and that permit is good for one year, and so they would re need to renew that permit every year. That's thank the you. Temporary part. The temporary part, yeah. correct. Okay, thank you. I have a question for staff. Um, Commissioner Patillo. Yeah, um, you mentioned uh, renewing the permit every year. How often, when, when do you stop renewing it? Uh, Chairman Gillette, Commissioner Patillo, there's currently no way to have it as a permanent resident. So as long as they want to continue to live in an RV on the property, they would need to come continue to come in and renew that permit every year. Okay, so they can get an unlimited number of renewals. Is what Correct. We don't we don't cap the number of times they can renew it. We remember. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, right. Okay. Um, any other commissioners have any questions? Hearing none, I'll ask for a motion. To approve for staff recommendations. Second the motion. I have a motion to approve by Commissioner Kelly, seconded by Commissioner Alexander. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. So moved. Item number eight, Matthew Gunderson. <clears throat> Item number eight is an evaluation of a request for a rezone of assessor's parcel number 3161313136 from an A general zone to a C2H highway commercial zone to allow for a feed store and tire shop in the Dolan Springs vicinity. Staff recommends approval with standard conditions. Thank you. I'll open the public hearing. Any, is the applicant here and do you wish to speak? Anyone else wish to speak on item number eight? Hearing none, I'll close the uh, open. I'll close the public hearing and ask any commissioners who need any questions. I have a question, uh, Commissioner Morse. Again, looking at the right of way issues, um, it looks like the right of way through that property is not perfected for the existing road. Staff. There it is. Chairman Gillette, Commissioner Morse, could you repeat the question? No, I, I just mentioned that uh, according to the right-of-way map that's in the packet, uh, the, uh, the right-of-way through that parcel has not been perfected. It's private, uh, the roadway area. Uh, 
Yeah, uh, Chairman Gillette, Commissioner Morse. So when this goes through the site plan review process, there's it would be up to Public Works. They may require dedication of that road or uh, perhaps clarifying that uh, right of way dedication at that time. Well, we could also put a stipulation on it that that be required. I believe so, yes. Yeah. So no tolls can be charged. Thank you. Uh, any other questions? <laughs> I will entertain a, a motion. I'd like to make a motion that we uh, approve this request in, in accordance with staff recommendations and that the dedication of the appropriate right of way consistent with both sides of it be uh, be made. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion by Commissioner Morris, seconded by Commissioner Patello. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. So moved. Item number nine, Alex Bolin. Item nine is an evaluation of a request for a rezone of assessor's parcel number 333. 35064 from an AR 36A agricultural residential 36 acre minimum lot size zone to an AR 16A agricultural residential 16 acre minimum lot size zone and an AR 5A agricultural residential 5 acre minimum lot size zone to allow for a minor land division in the Valley Vista vicinity. Staff recommends approval with standard conditions. Thank you. I'll open the public hearing. Anyone wishing to speak on item number nine? Uh, is the applicant here and do you wish to speak? Then I'll close the public hearing and ask if any commissioners have any questions. Hearing none, I'll call for a motion. Motion to approve for staff. A second motion. I have a motion by Commissioner Kelly. Uh, seconded by Commissioner Alexander. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. So moved. Item number 10, Peggy Clements. Item 10 is an evaluation of a request for a special use permit for assessor's parcel numbers 318-21085A and 318-21018 to allow for two helipads in a CRE commercial recreation zone in the Meadview vicinity. Staff recommends approval for development standards. Thank you. I'll open the public hearing. Is the applicant here and do you wish to speak? Good morning again. Uh, my name is Kathy Tackett Hicks. I'm acting as the owner's agent. Um, this is a request for additional helipads up on the top of the hill. Maybe you can't see that very well on the topo, but he does this uh, individual in this project has approval in the bottom part of the valley right there. But when there's inclement weather, uh, they would prefer to be up on the top. But if, it's, if that's too windy, then they would land on the bottom. But this is to move the helicopter not move it, keep it, but add to it on the top of the hill. I think I just confused yourself because now I'm confused. Okay. Um, but this is on the top of the hill. The other one is on the bottom. <laughs> so there's no problems, no opposition. It works better for the operation. And we'd ask that you approve it. <laughs> Do you have any questions from the commissioners of the applicant? Thank you very much. You. Anyone else wish to speak on this item? Hearing none, I'm going to close the public hearing. Any commissioners have any questions or comments? Then I call for a motion. Motion to approve per staff recommendations. I need a second. Second the motion. I have a, a motion by Commissioner Martin, ex seconded by Commissioner Alexander. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. So moved. Item number 11. Matthew Gunderson. Item number 11 is an evaluation of a request for a rezone of assessor's parcel number 31004043A from an AR10A agricultural residential 10 acre minimum lot size zone to an AR4A agricultural residential 4 acre minimum lot size zone to allow for a minor land division in the Kingman vicinity. Staff recommends approval with standard conditions. 
Thank you. I'll open the public hearing. Anyone wishing to speak on this item? Is the applicant present? I'll close the public hearing and ask any commissioners have any questions? Then I will call for a motion. Motion to approve per staff recommendation. Second. I have a, a motion by Commissioner Martin, seconded by Commissioner Barlow. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. <laughs> Item number 12 is our monthly reports. Are there any monthly reports? Any comments from the commissioners? And the last item is a call to the public. Seeing none, the Planning and Zoning Commission is adjourned. <laughs>